Shalom Chavrin. It is exciting night tonight. Uh, those of you that will be watching this video, um, one of the ways that we celebrate Shavuot is staying up all night, reading and studying the Torah. It is a Jewish tradition. And by the way, those of that do not know uh, about this holiday, what the holiday is about. This is the seventh week after Passover. Uh, it is the on the 50th day, which we have 49 days with seven weeks, but on the 50th day, we have this particular holiday, Shavuot. Uh, typical greeting is Hag Samek, which is happy holidays for the Jewish people. It is the wheat harvest. Uh, it is the, uh, then we have the long duration uh, between now and um, uh, the Feast of uh, 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 Tabernacles, uh, uh, the Feast of uh, Sukkot, uh, the Feast of uh, Yom Poim, Rosh Hashanah. Uh, we'll have all these feasts coming up here in, 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 a, in two or three months from now, a little less than three months, that is, a little over two. And so this is just a really exciting holiday that we celebrate in Israel. A lot of Jews do stay up all night studying Torah. And I guarantee you one thing, if you've ever been in Israel, especially in the Jewish quarter, and if you happen to be in Israel right now, all you got to do is go through the Jewish quarter tonight. You can walk through that quarter late at night. It's okay. Nobody's going to bother you. Just stay in the Jewish quarter, that is. Uh, you will hear the singing and the praises to Hashem. Uh, just marvelous, marvelous indeed. And uh, before we get into our Torah portion tonight, uh, uh, some things I wanted to kind of mention to you that, that, that's going on and ask you to be in prayer for us as well. And that is we are still looking to do a road trip through the United States here. Uh, we may end up doing two, uh, but we want to do this before we go back over to Israel and uh, our passion uh, really is we want to do something to give back to you guys and your kindness and giving to this ministry. Uh, and if you so therefore, it doesn't have to be a big gathering, uh, but I want to kind of give you a rough and this is just a rough itinerary as of now. Uh, there is a brother and some sisters in Western North Carolina right on the border of, uh, I believe, Tennessee, that uh, have asked us to come up there. They're wanting to host a meeting up in that area. Now, I don't know the, the actual place yet, and we haven't set a date. Another place that we may be going to, and again, this is tentative, uh, Sister uh, Lori uh, Batlavi uh, is doing a meeting up in Louisville, excuse me, not Louisville, uh, it's it's near it's near Chicago, Illinois. It's not actually in Chicago. It's on the outside of Chicago, and uh, that is, by the way, on the 12th of July. And she's asked us if we would come be a part of that. Uh, so we just kind of have to get some things set before we can make for, for a definite plans to do the trip because it, 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 we do have cost incurred to do it, no doubt. Uh, but like I said, you know, this is. The purpose for doing it is for us to be able to, to, to just come and meet you and, and greet you guys. Uh, so anyway, I, I kind of, as of right now, based on what we were looking at, we would probably leave out sometime around the 1st of July. Uh, we would go up through Atlanta, uh, Birmingham, and Nashville, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, headed up to Louisville. So... Uh, I say not Louisville, excuse me, <laughs> Louisville, Indian, that's Louisville, Kentucky, Indianapolis, Indiana, headed up towards Chicago because we would we would try to keep that that that, that appointment there with Sister Leora uh, and the meeting that she would be having up there. And then as we came back down, uh, we would cut over towards Knoxville, Tennessee, where the brother over in uh, western North Carolina, and, and I'm assuming Knoxville, Tennessee is somewhat close to that area. But I'm just trying to give you some ideas. Now, as of right now, only in Indiana, uh, excuse me, in uh, Chicago and in uh, the western North Carolina, close to the Tennessee border, is the only two places where people have asked, asked us to come, as well as Miami, Florida. So if you're somewhere in Florida, we, they are, we are looking at doing a meeting in Miami. Uh, if you happen to be in South Florida near Fort Myers, we could even do a meeting here. As well, it doesn't have to be during that particular trip. It could be when we come back. 
Um, but or if you happen to know someone or if you would like to try to host a little event in your town, uh, we have no requirements for, for doing this. Uh, we just want to be a blessing. Of course, we do it, everything is done by faith. So, uh, you know, we're not, we're not opposed if someone wants to give. That's fine, too. But we just want to be able to do this as a blessing to you guys uh, and get a chance to meet you. So there again, the cities would be Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky, Indianapolis, Indiana, then on up into Chicago, uh, coming back down through Knoxville, and then on, on back into to here. Uh, now, I say coming back to here, we might even look at Macon coming back or something like that. So uh, just kind of keep these things in mind. Pray about it. See how the Lord leads you. And I uh, always have dry hands. Uh, I'm always having to lick the fingers. Uh, another thing, too, just to kind of update you on this again, maybe because we know we have listeners around the world, we will actually in September be in Europe. We'll be in Slovakia. Uh, as well as the Czech Republic and Poland. Uh, I'm going to Poland because we have literally had thousands of family members that were killed at Auschwitz. Uh, there were other camps as well, but I, I really feel uh, the need to go back and pay my respects to our family members that have died there. Um, I don't know if I'll do it in this video here or not. Maybe I can post a little bit uh, for you from uh, my own DNA results that were done. Uh, there might be some people that are interested in that. So I may, may put some of that up for you to see. If I don't, then forgive me, I'll do it some other time. Uh, there is something I would like for you guys to be in prayer for us about, and that's India, the country of India. There are several little church groups in India that have been asking me to come to India. And I want to really pray about it because I realize they're a very poor country and they don't have the finances for me to come there. And the only way we could do it is if it was something that God laid upon your heart for us to do. So if for some reason the Lord lays that upon your heart, um, just send me an email if you would. And by the way, we do have a new email address. Uh, it's it's uh, part of our website. It's called contact at israelreturns.com. So you can email us there. You can still email us at israelreturns at aol.com. Uh, speaking of the website, drop by our website, israelreturns.com. We've had a lot of changes on the website. And I think you may enjoy that. A lot of changes are still coming up. My wife is starting her own blog on there. Uh, Brother Aaron, who is the, uh, the webmaster of the site, is actually uh, doing news updates for us. He's very good at keeping up with the news around the world. And so he is actually posting that. Uh, Brother Gary Lowry will be uh, coming on board, writing a blog on there as well, updating specific things dealing with Israel. And also Brother Tony Pope uh, will be doing a blog on there as well about the Vatican. We've had several brothers, even sisters, that have been uh, so kind to join in with us to be able to touch on different areas, different specialties there uh, that just touches a different array of topics that, that may be a blessing to you, especially since I can't always get to all these different issues. I can't always get to, to um, the things on the Vatican. Uh, or Israeli news as much as I would like to, even though we are stepping up the pace on doing our Israeli news. Which, speaking of that, um, I would be doing a news broadcast tonight, but I'll just quickly let you know, the United Nations, if you don't already know this, the United Nations um, are speaking, or excuse me, taking the side of the Palestinian unity government. So Israel, again, is becoming very isolated. And... Uh, so I, I really believe that this uh, nine-month negotiation, negotiations, um, I can't help but wonder if there hasn't been some consensus met in the background and it's just really fighting out this last little bit here. Um, I don't know. Like I said before when I started this, I can't prophesy this, but it looks very much from what the Scripture looks like that this is when we would have two states 
Uh, and even if Israel's not gone along with it, it seems like the world is making sure that Palace, Palestinians become a state very much so. So it's a little, little troubling to say the least. So anyway, as I mentioned, pray for us as whether or not to do this India trip. We need to know. And again, if, I want the will of God if we should go. Uh, there's some very precious people there that listen to the ministry that have invited us. Um, and... I just have a heart for them. I really have a heart for them. Uh, you may find them on our Facebook page. If you're on our Facebook page, uh, some, some precious people there. So we, we really want to pray about that and see how the Lord leads on that. A couple of places I would like to go uh, as well. And so I'll just mention it because we have a lot of listeners in Australia and as well as New Zealand. Uh, don't know how the Lord will lead on that. But you brothers and sisters in those areas as well. Uh, as well as London, England, because I'll be in Europe, so London would not be too hard for us to make it over to that area. But if you guys, anybody there would be interested in trying to sponsor a meeting in one of those countries there, drop us a line. Uh, there's a lot of you guys in both those countries, uh, and I could hook you, if you're interested, we could hook you guys together to where... Maybe we could do something and we could come and visit you. Like I said, my heart's desire is to come and visit the people that are so kind uh, and that show so much love to us. So anyway, uh, also too, now, Brother Rob Conrad sent us an invitation to be part of a, a campaign that he'll be doing in late September. Brother Rob is going to be posting um, that particular meeting on his website, heisnear.com. Um, and it'll be, sept I think it's September 27th. Just check out his website. You'll, you can find out the details on it. Uh, he had asked us to actually come and speak in person there, but it's in Georgia. Uh, but I don't think we'll be here at that time. We should be in Israel. Uh, but if for some reason we delay the trip or if I come back temporarily for this meeting uh, and then fly back to Israel, that, that could be a possibility. Nonetheless, though, we will be speaking live with Brother Rob Conrad uh, on both days that he's doing the meeting. So we'll be a part of that meeting nonetheless. But if you're able to get out there, check it out at heisnear.com as Brother Rob's website. It will truly be a blessing. He's got another brother that will be speaking there as well. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a blessing to you. Anyway, let's get right into this uh, message. And oh, by the way, don't forget, we are doing... The newsletter it is beginning to about to start. I've always said this, and but I never had anyone with the technology or the, or let me just put it this way, Brother Aaron, the brother that is doing our website, is completely volunteered, uh, his love, his time, uh, to 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 build what you what you're seeing on the website, um, and God just knew we needed help and. We've had other people come on board that we've tried to pay to help us. Um, and, and we know it costs money to do stuff like this. And we've wanted to be able to um, give Brother Aaron even a love offering. He doesn't like taking things very well. But uh, if it wasn't for God sending him, we would not be able to do what we're able to do now. And that is expanding and reaching out some of the things we've longed to do, including the newsletter. Uh, and if you go on there... Uh, the website there, you'll see a little place about the newsletter. If you go in there and register for the newsletter, keep in mind it will send you an email to confirm that you want to be part of the newsletter. And this is for legality purposes that you confirm that. It's very important that you confirm it once you've registered because we don't want to send something to, some, to people that don't want to get the newsletter. And, uh, and by the way, in the newsletter, it's not going to be like so many other people where you're indonated, or I don't know how to say that word. You're not going to be hammered about giving and stuff like that. It's just going to be keeping you guys up to date with what's going on. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get right into the Word of God. Like I said, the Feast of Shavuot is the celebrating of the Torah, God giving the Torah to Moses. It is customary that we read also from the book of Ruth during this time, which I will be uh, presenting to you tomorrow a teaching on the book of Ruth. If you've never heard me speak on this subject before, I think you'll really be blessed. And every time I go back and reread the story of Ruth, God just opens up more and more doors. Uh, he's really given me some wonderful insight on this book. 
Um, and I'm sure it'll be a blessing once again, especially for the thousands of people that have come on board since I did that video uh, that have never heard it. So you'll get to be, um, I say blessed because I get blessed just by speaking about it. Uh, but I'm going to read to you tonight actually from the book of Exodus. And I really owe a, a, a debt of gratitude to Brother Gary Lowry uh, for the revelation that God gave me this morning. He left a message on my phone last night. And he said to me, he said, you know, Brother Steve, he says, if you think about it, because we had been talking about Moses and I'd shared with him how that when I was living in Israel back in 2004, praying about how could I ever learn the Hebrew language? And I said, there's no, there's just no way, God. I said, I, I, I suffer with dyslexia. And the Lord led me. I asked him to lead me uh, to find an answer. And I was actually, this very uh, Tanakh I had in my hands. And I was um, taking, and, uh, and by the way, you want to, it's, it's Hebrew and English both, if you can see that, just out of curiosity there. But anyway, the Lord was, uh, I opened up right into the Exodus, the fourth chapter, and my finger laid, with, that, with my eyes closed, my finger laid right on the verse where God says to Moses, I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you will say. And uh, so you've seen the other videos I've spoke about that. I, I really don't like to go much into that. But Brother Gary made a comment to me, and he just left it on my answer machine. He said, you know, Brother Steve, isn't it interesting? Here Moses was in the presence of Almighty God. Hashem, he's standing right before Hashem. The very, and God tells him, who makes the deaf, who makes the dumb? You know, is it not I the Lord? I'm just paraphrasing that. But he said, here he is in front of the very God that can heal him, and he doesn't even ask. And that just really spoke to my heart when Brother Gary said that. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, you know, which I'm no Moses, but, but the point is, I couldn't help but think, you know, here I have cried unto God because I can't speak the language, and all I want to do is just talk to my Jewish brothers and sisters that speak Hebrew and be able to share with them the things that God is showing my heart about the Messiah, but do it with them in the Hebrew tongue, like Paul did. You know, Paul, when he beckoned uh, to them in the Hebrew tongue, the Bible said they listened all the more earnestly. And so that's been my passion, to know the Hebrew language fluently enough to be able to do that. And so when Brother Gary wrote that, I'm like, whoa, no, 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 no. God is, that's right, God is able to do it. I'll definitely take up that. I, I, will, I will accept it. I will believe it that he will give me that language. What I don't know by learning, he'll give me supernaturally. And I believe that with all of my heart. Anyway, let's start. I want to take you, and I'll take you traditionally, reading the Torah. So we'll read a little bit here together here. Uh, I will take you now. Let's see. Where should we start at here? I am going to be doing right here where God meets Moses for the first time. Um, let's go to verse 13. Moshe, and I'll read to you in Hebrew, and then I'll start reading it in English for you. Adonai Elohai Avotechem, Elohai Yiksak, Elohai Yaakov, Shalachani Elayachem, Zeshmi Leolam, Veze Zachari Lador Dador. Anyway, what we read here, and uh, I wanted to kind of read here because there was a marvelous revelation that the Lord gave me uh, right after Brother Gary had spoken these words to me. And when I was listening to his message, 
and I didn't even have to read it in the Torah. I just knew what it was. And uh, so we're going to get down to it, but let's just pick up here and let's read from verse 13. And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, they shall say to me, What is his name? See? The Yom, the Yom, excuse me, the Yom, the Yom, the Mashemo, and they will say to me, What is his name? Such a beautiful passage right there. And by the way, this was never fulfilled. This is what we're going to kind of look at right here. Prophecies that are laying here in the Word. We would think they're not prophecies. We would think that, well, the children of Israel says, oh, by the way, Moses, what is God's name? But I personally have not found any place where they asked him that question. You know, now, if it's there and I've just overlooked it, Please, let me know. I, I want to know, where did they ask Moses, what is God's name? I think it's very applicable for today, though, because today Israel has no idea how to say the name of God. I know Brother Gary in a vision or a dream that God gave him not long ago, he saw rabbis, they were together, and they were worshiping the Lord, and they were using God's divine name. They were using His divine name. And he heard the way they were using it. And he said, you know, he, he tried to, he said, I can't really pronounce it, Brother Steve, but it looked like it's something like Yahweh, Yahweh. And, and so he was trying to do that. But the thing is, the hour is coming where God's divine name is going to be restored. Now, I'll, just for safe time, I won't try to look it up, but we know it's actually in a couple of places in the Bible, but Zaphaniah in particular, God speaks about a pure language being restored to the people so that they all may be able to worship upon the name of Hashem, the name of yod heh vav -Heh, His divine name. So a pure, name, pure uh, uh, language must be restored for this purpose. Not only that, in order to be able to say ka omer, which we say, I say Hashem, but to be able to say, thus saith the Lord. You know, so many people today, it's kind of interesting, you still hear it. People go around, they'll, they'll, they, they like to cite that. Thus saith the Lord. You know, thus saith the Lord is not God speaking. You've got to know His name. When you say ka omea, ka omea is how you say it in Hebrew, thus saith, then you better know His name. Now, this is why the name Yeshua is put in place because of the loss of the divine name. And once Yeshua is completed that meditorial work where Israel believes, I believe that's when the divine name of God will be restored. Why? Because once Yeshua has completed His divine work, then guess what? He doesn't have a need to be called Yeshua. Hashem is salvation, or as some people say, Yahweh is salvation. But he's now back to being God himself. It's interesting. You know, you ever think about it? Somebody shared this with me one time. and I forget who it was. I can't. Maybe it was my wife. She said, and, and it had several other people. In fact, one sister uh, wrote me one time and after I mentioned this that, uh, that she said, do you think maybe the, the name that, that Jesus gets, Yeshua gets, is uh, when it says that no man knoweth the name but he himself is actually God's divine name? Well, there was a... a a sister that, that, that wrote me not long after that, she said, you know, brother, I had a dream and I've seen Yeshua riding on a white horse and the, the letters yod Hey vav Hey was written on his thigh. And she said, the odd thing was, she said, I don't speak Hebrew. I didn't know what those letters were. She said, I looked it up though because I remembered what they looked like and realized that he is, that was God's divine name was written on his leg. Incredible, isn't it? Just fascinating. Anyway, so the point is, is I don't believe that they ever asked him the question, what is your name? But today it would be appropriate. So we go on down. God says to, uh, to, to Moses, um, what shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I will ever be what I, what I now am, or I am that I am, some translations make it 
Uh, and he says, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, Ihaye, I am, has sent me to you. And God said moreover to Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzhak or Isaac, the God of Jacob, Yaakov, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. And that's where we stopped reading at, where it's right there. But let's continue on down. And go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, has appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Mizraim, or Egypt. That's, that's how we say Egypt in Hebrew. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaani, to the Hiti, the Amori, the Perzi, the Hivai, and the Yuvasi, to a land flowing with milk and honey, and they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt. Now, notice, that's really important. I want you to forget this here. Verse 18, and they shall hearken to thy voice. Just keep that in mind, okay? And thou shalt come and all the elders of Israel and the king of Egypt, and you shall say to, the, to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. And now let us go, we pray, three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go, if not by mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in their midst. And after that will he let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of Egypt. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor and of her sojourns in her house, jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and garments. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, and you shall dis, uh, despoil Egypt. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me. Now Moses is going to go back to speaking to God. Now keep in mind, as we read this, and this is not something I'm going to get into tonight, but as we read this, this is what's going to happen in modern days as well. Because Pharaoh today is the Pope of Rome. There's no difference. So history is only going to repeat itself. And in this case, though, Israel needs to be set free from the bondage of the Vatican, or Babylon in this case. Okay, so anyway, so he says, uh, Moses says, and, uh, and answers and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice. For they will say, the Lord has not appeared to thee, and the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it turned into a snake. And Moses fled from it. And the Lord said to Moses, Put, on thy hand, put out thy hand and take it by its tail. And he put out his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. And that they may believe that the Lord God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to thee. And the Lord said furthermore to him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was diseased as white as snow. And he said, Put thy hand into thy bosom again. By the way, when I was reading this, I don't know yet what the answer to this is. But I feel like this has something to do with Yeshua. And I say that because, you know, when you put your hand into your bosom, you know, I would imagine he just slipped it up under his jacket or placed it up under his arm or something. And I can't say that it does, but I couldn't help but think about the spear that went through Yeshua's side that thrust him through and pierced his, uh, his heart. So I've always kind of wondered about, or I've been wondering about that since reading this tonight. So anyway, don't know the answer to that though. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was diseased as white as snow. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand in his bosom again. And when he took it out of his bosom, behold, it was turned again as the other flesh, back normal again. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, 
nor hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Now see, the voice of the sign is not the same as the two natural signs. The stick to a snake or the um, hand turn into leprosy and restored again is not the same thing as the voice of the sign. The voice of the sign is whatever Moses says happens. But there's two different voices. One is a present tense and the other is a latter sign or the latter time. And he says, if they do not believe the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. I personally believe that this is speaking of Moses' ministry at the first time he's here and the second time. Now, as I've said to you in the past, I don't know if that means he comes back literally or is the same spirit, the same Holy Spirit that was upon Moses is anointing a man for this day that will come upon him. I can't answer that. I don't know the answer to it. Um, that thou shalt take... Okay, now after he says that, uh, the latter sign, if they don't believe the voice of the latter sign, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe even these two signs, nor hearken to thy voice. See, again, he separates. When he says, if they will not believe these two signs, that's the stick in the hand turning to, to like a leprosy. And then he says, nor hearken to thy voice. So clearly God now separates the voice of the sign from the literal miracles that he was doing. So his voice was a sign to the people. All right. Now watch though. Here's where it gets interesting. That thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou dost take out of the river shall become blood on the dry land. And Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not an eloquent man, neither yesterday nor the day before, nor since you have spoken to, your, to thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. This is what Brother Gary was talking about. He's standing right before God that can heal. Why didn't he ask God just to heal him? Everything happens for a reason. Everything. And the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes a man dumb or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Now that was a command. God said he would be with his mouth and he will teach him what he will say. And he said, Oh my Lord, listen really carefully here. Send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Period. That's verse 13, or Yud Gimel. I want to share with you something from the Hebrew text on this right here. He says, Ve'yomer bi Adonai shelach na I mean, sin now. Ve'yod, by the hand, ta shelach of him who you will send. It is in the future. Now, I don't believe Moses knew what he was saying, but the thing is, you got to understand, God has already just said, I will be with your mouth and I will teach you what you will say. And then the first thing that comes out of Moses' mouth is a prophecy. Uh, this has just floored me. I, I, never, I never looked at it like that. He says, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe even these two signs, nor hearken to thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water out of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou dost take out of the river shall become blood on the dry land. And Moses and Moshe said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not an eloquent man, neither yesterday nor the day before, nor since thou hast spoken to thy servant, but I am slow of speech and a slow tongue. 
And the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes a man dumb or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Isn't it interesting that he speaks about not just the mouth, but about deaf, dumb, and blind? You know, this is not coincidence. What did, what did Yeshua say? You have ears to hear and cannot hear. You have eyes to see and you cannot see. Every one of these things are spiritually applied as well. So, God says all this, or seeing or blind, is it not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. See, right here when it says, Ve'yomer bi Adonai, Shalach na, send now. Shalach, it's the word sin. Na is now. Be'yod, in the hand. See, in the hand. Tashalach. Artishalach. The tav right there puts it in the future. And it's in the masculine. So he's sending, he'll send someone. It's going to be, that's why he says, send him whom thou wilt send. Moses actually makes his first prophecy. And he doesn't think he's making a prophecy, but God's already told him, I'll be with your mouth and I will teach you what you will say. So he prophesies immediately. It's almost like Moses is saying, the guy you're going to send, send him. I can't do it. Just send him. And as I said to you, they, never, they did not believe Moses. In fact, when you go and you look at the, at the, at the Scripture readings, clearly, even Paul said, they never, they never believed Moses. So many different prophetic things show that the people truly did not believe him. In fact, one of the reasons why we know they didn't believe him was because they, everyone died except Joshua and Caleb. Only their children, the ones that were born during the wilderness journey, actually make it into the promised land besides Joshua and Caleb. Aaron and all Aaron's, um, or, you know, Aaron, Miriam, all the original Jews, all out of all the uh, 1.2 million Jews that came out of Egypt died during that 40 years. And it wasn't from a lack of not having a supernatural nearly experience because every one of them were testifying that they did, their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out, their bodies didn't abate in strength. 40 years and your body don't even get, get older or nothing? Why did they die? They died because of unbelief. Mm. So let's wrap this up. I want to read you a little bit more right here after verse 13. And the anger of the Lord burned against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. This has nothing to do with the one that he's going to send. And also, behold, he comes to meet thee. And when he sees thee, he will be glad in his heart, and thou shalt speak to him, and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do, and he shall be thy spokesman to the people, and he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him in the stead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, with which thou shalt do signs." Do the signs. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return to my brethren who are in Egypt, and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go return to Egypt, for all the men are dead who sought thy life. Absolutely incredible. I trust it's been a blessing to you. Um... Again, uh, don't forget to check out our new website and keep in mind the places that we're looking at going if you would like to be a part of that. Uh, again, you can either email us at israelreturns at aol.com or contact at 
is our returns.com. Either email address is perfectly okay. Uh, and we love you guys so much. All that you guys do for us is what makes everything possible. And we just, we can't thank you enough for your support and your love to this ministry. God bless you and thank you. And hopefully we'll get to see you on this trip. Now, I know there's a lot of you too that live out west, places like that. Uh, we're not excluding that as a possibility. So if in the event you are out towards the west or the Midwest uh, and you would like for us to come that direction and you want to try to host a meeting of some sort there uh, for us to come and speak at, just drop me a letter and let me know. Uh, we'll see what we can do. We could always possibly tweak the trip we're on now. Uh, we're just trying to make it the most economically we can as far as in our travels and going. So, but just let, him, let us know. God bless you and good night. Shalom. And if you're up tonight uh, studying the Torah, I can't say I'll watch the sunrise, but I'll definitely be up late because I'm going to be preparing for the story of Ruth. And trust that'll be a blessing for you tomorrow. God bless and good night. Laila Tov.